Hi folks, this is Steve again, and I'm here just to kind of bring some small topics forward in, in little bite-sized packages about what I needed to learn to do some of my work in Dorico 5 since I'm now transitioning over. Now, of course, everything that I'm going to say is in the manuals and it's elsewhere in the um, cyberspace, but I wanted to actually do it in very small chunks that people can watch in you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, and then move forward. So the first thing I wanted to do is to show people very quickly how to split a score into more than one flow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going here. So here we have um, a Dorico project opened to the Civil War piece that I wrote that had, uh, that was a compilation of Civil War songs. And um, this is the version uh, that was directly related to the XML file. So this is basically the defaults. And you can see here that we got the project name. We've got the flow number, which is blank. And in this particular piece, you've got, I want to now split the different songs into different flows. So here's Swing Low on page one. On page two is Bonnie Flag. Actually, it's Blue Bonnie Flag but I'll have a tongue twister. So I'm just gonna say flag so I don't twist my tongue. So the first thing we wanna do is to go ahead and to split this into flows. If we go into the setup mode, we can see that it was imported uh, as an MXL file with just one flow. Okay, so let's go ahead and split this into two flows. How do you do that? Well, let's go ahead and select the first note of the new flow. Go here to right and by gosh and by golly split flow. And we can see now from looking at this that it has been split into two flows. And we can go back to setup and we can see in fact that we have the two flows. Flow one and flow two. Now, naming the flows in the setup window does not necessarily correspond to how it's going to be displayed on the page, but let's go ahead and take off number one and then just write swing low. And on this one, double click on it and call it just, it's actually blue Bonnie flag. Okay, so now we have the flows uh, labeled for our reference. But once again, these flow titles that, as I've done it here, do not show up in the, um, in the larger uh, piece up here. And we'll, and we'll get there in a second. So, okay. So now we want to work on how we're going to name or we're going to put our titles in place. And to do that, we we're going to have to go to page layout. So, if we go to the engrave tab, we're going to see that in fact, um, we've got all these pages and um, we're going to want to name these flows so they display in a way that we would like to do it. How do you do that? Well, the best thing to do is to go ahead and hit on the Macintosh, which is what I'm using, or or a Windows machine, a control I, to bring up the, pod, the project information. And you can say, you can see here in the project tab, we have our two flows. So flow number one, we're going to go ahead and title swing low, sweet chariot, whoops. The subtitle is, oh, let's just call it um, a spiritual, no dedication, and arranged by myself. We'll leave it that way. So we apply that. Now, the blue Bonnie flag is actually correct because it ported it over. Subtitle is Confederate, Confederate, war song 
Alabama Confederate song. Whoops. And arranged by myself, apply and close. Now we've set the project information for these two flows. And when you can add a dedication and an arranger and all of these. So let's go ahead and we'll, we've applied it and we've closed it. But of course, nothing has happened here because we have to set the page layout to support what we've said. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is if you make these changes to the first page template, click on it, make these changes. I'm going to come back to this. It won't work. Well, why won't it work? Because there's a default in the project layout, in the page layout, which overrides what you do here. So the first thing you want to do is to go ahead and to bring up the page layout. And um, shift command L or um, up in the menu. So go to flows. New flows always start a new page. Well, we want that. Used first page template, but it is not the first page template that you see over here um, in where we edit our page templates. So basically, never, because that'll allow us to overwrite the template. Um, and basically, I think we should be fine with that. Always start a new page. Don't use their don't use their first page template. Uh, and um, don't show flow headings because that's where the numbers are actually. Um, so I think we're good there apply close ah so now you see that the number has gone away from the flow heading well now we want to add it back but in a way that we we like so now we can move forward into the into the um, engrave tab and then start to work on the templates that we're going to use for each page so you can click on first page and you can see how the tokens are arranged. So the very beginning of the piece, I'm going to leave the project title on as uh, being a Civil War memory, but I want to add now the flow title as I wish to do. To do that, I now have to edit Um, this page. So let's go ahead and edit it by clicking on the text box. First thing we can do in this particular case is there's no lyrics, there's no no project lyricist. So we can basically click on that and get rid of the lyricist. We can leave the project composer in place. But we're going to head, we're going to go ahead and add the flow title. So I gotta make room for it by pulling this down, by grabbing this guy, pulling it down, creating a text frame, clicking in the text frame, and then adding what is called the token. And if you go to the manual, you can actually see in the manual a list of all the tokens. So if we want to put the flow title into it, we can basically type in the flow title. Now I, oh boy, I guess it didn't work great for cutting and pasting, did it? Okay. But the basic um, way that a 
that a token is set up is as you see it here. So you have to type it in and then with the correct. In this case, it's flow title. So I want to go ahead and center it. Project composer, project title, flow title. I want to make sure that it's both left and right pages just in case. Apply it and close it. Well, nothing's changed. Why not? Because we now have to assign the first page to not default, which is every other page, but the first page template that we just changed. Right click, insert page template change. It lets me select the first page. OK, there you go. And now you can see that it has populated the project title as well as the first flow title. Um, if you want now, you can see here that the blue bonnie flag is actually page two of the score. So, but it's the first page of that new flow. Well, what do we do? Because if I put that as a first page, Civil War memory is also going to be at the top. And let's say that we don't want that. Well, what we can do is we can create a new page template based on the first and call it something like first page of layout. Click OK. And now we can double click on it and we can take out the project title. Come on, come on. I'm trying to just click on it. There we go. Delete. Let's go ahead and move this back up a little bit. Move this back up a little bit. Move this back up a little bit to give it more space. If you want to make the flow title bigger, just click on it, highlight it, and let's make it, I don't know, 16. Copy it left to right, apply it, close it, and then go to page two, which is the first page of the new layout. Right click, insert page template change, first page of layout. There you go, blue bonnie flag. Now every other page is going to be, as you can see here, set to the default. And the default, you can make changes just like we've talked about. Well, hopefully this is enough to get you started and to get you able to get moving in a project. And of course, there's much, much more to say, but I think we're gonna go ahead and leave it here. All right, folks, thanks much. I'm gonna go ahead and close out now.